Welcome back to Life With Us TV. It's your girl, Annette. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right. We're going to do something a little different than how we usually do our um, Thursday Night Lives. And what we're going to do is we're going to answer you all's questions live. I know that this month is usually the month where everybody is getting together, trying to figure out what they're going to do for their 2024 and even their 2025. Right. But knowing this is what I do. I know how to break down the steps of actually going from inception all the way down to coming back from your cruise. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask you questions, but we're going to ask you by topic. Yes. So while we're in a topic, if you have a question that's not pertaining to the topic, we're going <clears> to <throat> skip it. But at the end, we'll have an open Q&A forum where you will be able to ask your questions. So with all of that said, we're yeah. going to speak to everybody in the chat. How is everybody doing? Hey, what's, EJ. What's going on, EJ? What's happening? I see 43 of y'all in the house so far. Don't forget to smash that like button when you're coming through the door. Hello. And, and I also wanted to add this as well. Uh Hey, like the Queen said, we're doing this a little bit different. It's mm -hmm. it's it's still the first time cruises Q and A, but except for we got it out in topics, um, based upon the steps of you booking the Carnival cruise. So in each section, we're gonna ask you the question, but please do not ask a question that's not in the section. And what we're gonna do up on the screen in this section, we're gonna have bullet points to kind of jog your memory of kind of what you need to have. Uh, or what you need to think about in each section. Mm. And then if you uh, see something that jogs, remember, you can ask a question then. And uh, I think it's going to go well. Like last week, uh, when you put your question, uh, <laughs> I want you to put an emoji. It don't matter what emoji. Where did you come up <laughs> with Emoji that? it is. Put the emoji, and I will go to directly to your question when we get to the section. Uh, it's six different sections, and I think it's going to be very valuable for you guys. Uh, yeah, see so some of y'all still coming in the house. What's going on, hey, Kevin? What's going on, Alicia, Jew? Alicia, Tammy, Melody, Tammy, Diane, Latoya, Bell, Trey. Q, Michael, what's happening, fam? Monica, hey, Monica, hey, Mercedes, hey, Regina, Chastity, what's up? Danny, Andre. Oh, yeah, we got the whole band. We got the hey, whole Bella squad Beauty. in the house, boy. Yeah, hey, hey. Man. So I hope y'all had a good work day. Yes. This is my pre-birthday. What's, go, what's going on, Joe? My birthday is tomorrow. Yep. Tomorrow. Oh, mm -hmm. Joe. Eh, turn eh, up, turn eh, up. Eh. Hey, man, you were blessed to have a birthday. Your birthday to be on Friday, man. Yeah, that hardly ever happens. <laughs> and guess who doesn't want to do a thing? Me. Yep. So you, I don't care you got anything the same, about it. You got the same sent. You got the same sentiment as me. That's because we um been busy all month. What's going on, Alicia? Appreciate it, Alicia. <laughs> Uh, appreciate y'all. Thank y'all yeah, so, so much. Happy birthdays in there, man. Oh, yeah. I'm going to make a post tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's going to be a happy birthday post tomorrow. So y'all be on the lookout for that. All right. All so, right. all right, babe, we're going to go ahead and get started. All right. All right. So the first section that we want to get questions from you guys. So at this point, you can start doing questions once we put them up. So the first section that we want to deal with is the research and booking. So on the screen, you can see these we consider the important things to think about in that section. Mm -hmm. So that's from choosing a cruise, a destination, the duration, the type of cruise, whether right. it's like couples, birthday, anniversary, singles, group, the, <laughs> right, group, um, budgeting questions like uh, the total cost of the fare, what's included, what's not included in the cost, things like to that nature, choosing your cabin inside versus outside. I mean, outside, <laughs> inside versus ocean view balconies and suites, and then, of course, the travel insurance. Right. So in the comments there, you can start asking questions regarding that, and we're going to probe the queen's mind to figure out these answers, man. Y'all going to probe my mind on a Thursday when I have worked hard all week long. They still wish you <laughs> happy birthday. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all <laughs> so much. Listen, I had already said that leading up to my 45th birthday, I was going to do a whole lot of Yes, I told you I don't want to do nothing. <laughs> I am over it. I am over being outside this month. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Any questions on research and booking? You just getting ready. You're in the research and booking phase of your cruise. And hey, Samuel. you got questions. Appreciate that, um, uh, Elena. So while yeah, I'm trying, they said I've learned so much from y'all. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. So while we're waiting for you all to drop some things in here, the first thing that I would tell most people is because this is what I do all day, every day. And sometimes when I get inquiries in, 
I know that they have no idea where to start because the first thing that I ask is, where are you leaving from? Like, where do you want to get on the ship from? And right. I will have people that will, will check every box, meaning that they want to know the prices on leaving on every port. No, 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 no. Because we already know you either are going to fly or you're going to drive or you're going to go to your home port. There's no in between. So even for myself, I know that when I am cruising, I'm going to hit Norfolk or I'm going to do Miami or Orlando. Nothing in between. So that's one of the first things that you really should think about is where are you willing to catch the ship from? That will narrow down a whole bunch of your options right then and there, because unlike getting in a car, you can go whatever direction that you want. Mm -hmm. But getting on a cruise ship from a particular destination or that de a particular port, that ship's going to tell you what that itinerary is going to be based on where you leave from. Right. So that we already narrows down a whole lot of that. All right. We got our first question from, from Trey. What's going on, Trey? Hey. Uh, Trey's question is, does Carnival's insurance include any medical? I know that's our U.S. health insurance. Does not work outside of the U.S. When you talk about medical, are you talking about like medical care on board or like medical evacuations? Um, and then it's also important. I'm glad you brought this up. Important to read what it is that they say that they cover, because a lot of times they will re um, insurance will reimburse you if you have to visit the medic on board of the ship. But most of the times you have to pay that money up front. So it's covered. But you got to cover it first and wait for reimbursement. So it's important to read and figure out what it is or how do they process that? Because just like insurance for your car, there are so many loopholes, so much fine print. Right. And of course, with every insurance company, they're going to try to figure out a way not to pay. It, it's just how it is. It's unfortunate because sometimes you want to just roll the dice and be like, Psh. yeah, whatever. But it will be <laughs> that big $50,000 evacuation that Ooh. you need to be covered. Now, you don't have to pay that out your pocket. <laughs> no, no, no. Right. All right. So the next question, uh, what's going on, Ashton? Hey, Ashton. Um, question Ashton. is... Ashington. Ashington. Sorry about that. Sweet rooms, thoughts. Are they worth it? They are not necessary, in my opinion. But if you can get one and it doesn't break the bank, it's nothing wrong with it. I enjoy a good sweet, but it's not the first thing that I'm going to reach for. For one, it's just me and him. Right. And for two, when I'm getting on a ship for us, most of the time we're doing groups or we're doing family time. I'm not in the room. Right. <laughs> so it just depends. Now, if you're going on a vacation and you feel like this is what you want to do, just a yeah. leisure and just be out on your balcony and just yeah, you want the best of the best. Yeah. Want, it's Go my, ahead this, and is do my it. this is my 50th birthday. So I want a sweet or yeah. this is my honeymoon or this is my end of my 50th yeah, milestone. Yeah, something. milestones. Yeah. yeah. Or unless you get a good deal. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next question is from Chastity. What's going on, hey, Chastity. Chastity? Question is, is a higher um, floor balcony cost more than a lower floor balcony? Yes. But when you look at it side by side, usually you're only paying probably like $50 or $60 more to move to a more prime location. Um, when you're starting to figure the numbers out, sometimes it'll scare you. Be like, oh, my God, it's really going up. But in the grand scheme of things, it's usually about 60 bucks just to go to a more prime location on a ship. All right. What's going on, Bowers? Number four, question with Carnival. How do you get good deals being cru being cruising for ben, years? Been cruising for years and I'm almost platinum. I'm congrats. A, congrats. <laughs> but I'm also going to tell you this. <laughs> you know how many times we cruise. And I have not had a VIFP offer on our cards in about two years. And that is not a lie. I keep thinking that it's a conspiracy against me that Todd and them set up to come to me <laughs> with the bull. But I even had to write into um, my BDM and I was like, is it got something to do with me being a travel agent? Because it, I legit don't have offers. The only offers that I get is that come back on board right after you get off of a ship. And everybody gets that. Right. Like the first 10 days after you get off a ship, they're trying to lure you back in. And that ain't really all that. But I'm going to be honest with you. And I don't say it's because you get a good deal. I say it's because you pre you're prepaying your right. um, trip. Casinos. Like 
when people are gamblers, they usually get the best deals, the best rates. But like I said, it's not that they're really getting the best rates. They're prepaying for those vacations. Right. I don't give a darn when nobody say, oh, I'm just paying with what the the, uh, the free play they give me. The house always wins. Right. If they are giving you those rates, it's because you're losing somewhere. Right. <laughs> and they want you to keep coming back because guess what? The house always wins. <laughs> All right. Uh, Trey uh, did a follow up. Say, so she was like, let's say. I fall and break my arm mm. and I need to go to the medic on board. Most of the time, stuff like that is, um, but I don't want to quote it because it's insurance and I'm not an insurance broker, but most of the time it is, but they will require you to put a credit card down and cover that first. All right. All right. Next question is from Danny Adams Moore. What's going on, Danny? Say, what's the pros and cons of having a room on deck one? Um, the pros is, the lower that you are to the waterline, the less motion that you actually have. It is what it is. I mean, the higher you go up, you're going to get more of the sway. It is get ready to storm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the con for me, because I started off on deck one and two. And the con of that is if you are ever to have like a rowdy crew on your ship, is usually on decks one and two because they are the cheapest rooms mm. on the ship. So those people that just want to get on board, have a good time, usually are on those floors. And I always say this when it comes to balconies too. So you'll have people that want to get on balconies right. and they'll start at whatever level that balcony, just say deck six is where the balconies start at. I don't usually place people there. Because you also have that same thing that goes on. Oh, the rowdy people. And I don't care about rowdy people, but when I'm ready to go to sleep, <laughs> I, I'm going to need you to be quiet. <laughs> right, right. All right. I see. Hey, TKP. Thank What's you so much. What's going on, TKP? Appreciate Thank it. you so much for the $5 super chat. Uh, hey, Lynette and Stanley. <laughs> Question part one. Please give details on the carnival bar card, not cheers, bubble, sign and seal, or... Um, Countable cash. Thanks. So you're talking the, about the, the, the bar, bar cash, cash? The bar cash. Yes. Bar cash is nothing more than a gift card that is specific to drinks. And I don't recommend people buying it unless it's a way for you to keep yourself in line. So for instance, if you were like, I'm going to drink $200 worth of alcoholic beverages, this cruise. Right. And once it's done, it's done. If that's good for you, that works for you, so be it. But the problem that I have with that is that's the only thing you could purchase with it is anything that you can drink. So, for instance, you get on a cruise and maybe you get a little seasick and you're right. not drinking. Guess what happens? The rest of that money that you put on that bar tab, um, I'm the, <laughs> on the bar cash is gone. It's non-refundable. Can't transfer it. Not getting that money back. Right. All right, this is a great question. What's going on, Crescent Moon? Suggestions where to cruise for an older couple who have never cruised before. We prefer to leave out of Florida. Uh, we prefer that too. Yeah. <laughs> Thinking of a seven or eight day cruise, Ooh, okay. we'll be celebrating an anniversary. Okay. So, because you're going to leave out of one of the best locations in this world, in my opinion, you have an array of choices. But since you said seven or eight day, I'm going to push you all the way to the eight day and do the Southern Caribbean itinerary, which includes Aruba and all of those nice places. I think that would be a dream, especially for your first. I think that's, that's the way to go. Indeed. In my, in my professional opinion. <laughs> All right, let's see. You so welcome, Ashton. Go back up. You missed one. Oh, here we go. Uh uh. One oh. back up there. One more uh, up. Back. Oh, here we go. Hey, T. What's going on, T? Uh, is deck two a bad deck for a room? No, but like I said earlier, because we've done it and done done it and done done, done yeah. and never had a problem, but I also go into it knowing. That it's the place where the most rowdiness will more than likely happen if it happens on a ship. Right. Because it is the cheapest cabins on the ship. All right. <laughs> I, I, I think we're back. 
Uh, so down in the comments real quick, if Hold if, on, if we if we are back, put ones in the comments if you can see and hear us. I agree. Say, said, just said, like your ex, we are back. Said the storm, man, knocked us off our rocker, but we, we, we back. All right, I see. See, fam, so you guys are back. You guys are back. All right. All right, I see really? the ones. And then it started blinking again. Okay. Like, this storm came from out of nowhere. Nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> Usually, we, we we try to maneuver around it, but no, this one All came right. from out of nowhere. So, uh, for good measure, we're going to move on to the next section. So, we just came out of answering questions for research and booking. So, now we're getting ready to go into the section for pre-cruise Pre preparation. All right, to head it off. Uh, let me uh, get that up on the screen All before right. you get started there. So here are, here are the things that people normally, uh, what you need to normally know in the pre-cruise section. So if you have any questions based upon what's on the screen, you can go ahead and answer it. So the queen going to let you know what's, what's there on the screen. All right, so the necessary documentation, if I haven't drilled anything in y'all head by now, you should know what that documentation is. In a nutshell, birth certificate, and state issued ID or passport and state issued ID. Don't argue with me about the state issued ID. They may not ask for it when you are getting on the ship, but they definitely will ask for it before you get off the ship and they want to make sure that you have it. Rhyme or reason? We may never know, <laughs> but sometimes they do require you to show your ID before getting back on the ship. Um, make sure that in step number two, that you are doing the necessary check-ins. So Carnival, mm -hmm. if you're not working with a travel agent, the travel agent will should also be telling you that, these. That's right, Trey. No uh, birth certificate with, with the feed, baby on, feed it. on it. <laughs> that's right. So your travel agent should be letting you know like specific time frames when it's time to check in. For instance, if it's time to do your online check-in, they should be letting you know. But not only that, don't rely just on that. Be checking your emails from Carnival. They also will send you an right. automated email letting you know that, hey, your, your cruise is getting ready to come up. This is the date where you can actually set what time you want to arrive to get on the ship. Within that, y'all already know, you have to set up your onboard spending account within those steps. So yeah. let's... Pull up a couple of the um, questions. All right, here we go. Uh, Phyllis, what's going on? Phyllis said, hey, what Phyllis. hotel to stay in Miami port? Okay, if you want to spend some money, <laughs> Intercontinental. If you want to be a little bit more modest, you can do the Hilton downtown. Miami is just across the bridge. You can actually see the ship from the hotel if you're up on the higher floors. And also the Hampton Inn and Biscayne Bay are my favorites. Those are my go-to hotels in Miami. All right. What's going, what's going on, Daryl? What's hey. up, fam? Say so question. What's the best time for boarding if you're flying into the destination port the day before? Whichever time suits you. So if you have to get out of your hotel, this is... Sometimes it's specific to when you have to get out of that hotel. So if you have normal checkout, which what is 10, 11 o'clock these days, which is just stupid in my opinion, <laughs> go ahead and see if you can do your getting on around about 12 o'clock. It gives you enough time to get out the hotel, get over there, and you don't have a whole lot of time in between. But if you're lucky enough to have a whole bunch of perks or you know stuff like that with a hotel brand that you can do later check it, um, check out, and on, in my opinion... Right. It's really not a whole lot of need to be bustling to get on the ship like super <clears throat> early. You can do the one o'clock, one thirty, and do it like that. I wouldn't wait until like that last one, but I, one thirty, one one thirty. What's going on? What's going on, Joe? Question is, um, stay home on excursions. Do you take a passport with you off the ship? I don't, but there are people that do, and it's more of a what are you comfortable with? For me, I have a picture of it in my phone behind password. So, I mean, you're always going to have your phone. Right. Um, I'm not planning on getting left behind. Um, but even if the ship leaves you behind, they have ways to get your passport to you. There is a protocol. They go in your safe and they get it. I don't want to talk about all that. <laughs> but a lot of people feel so much better having it on them 
when they leave the ship. So it's just a matter of what you prefer. But if you do make sure that it's secured on you properly, make sure that if you're getting in water, you got that thing in something that is water resistant. Um, and I, I would implore you to do it double because <laughs> your passport is not something you won't play around with. Like when we were in Greece, we had ours on us a lot right. only because of the stigma of being in Greece and how a lot of pickpocketing happens there and in hotel rooms too. So we were like, if I got it on me, on me, on me, I can get back to the States. Right. All right. Let's see. Where are we? Are we still good? Cause I keep getting a network, um, network connection on my phone. So I want to make sure that y'all can what, still hear us. What's going on, Andre? Um, question is, how can we know the attire for Elegant Night is? I've read that it could be uh, cruise casual, dressy, um, sign. All right. This, this, this storm <laughs> don't want us to be great tonight. <laughs> I told Stella, if we get knocked out one more time, I'm not coming back. <laughs> I'm not coming back. But here's uh -huh. the thing. It's so weird because it is super bright outside. Yeah. There's nothing like looking like nothing's happening. And then all of a sudden, I see y'all putting ones out. I was just ready to say put ones and we back. So I see all right. So we are so we back. So we're gonna let me go back in the comments and, and not explain why it went out and all that kind of stuff because <laughs> we don't not, know before before <laughs> we get knocked out again. So I need to find out where but, I am in the comments. But if we get knocked out again when I come back, let me see. Uh I'm going to bed. Yeah, they say frozen. Let's see. No, that was up there. You're going backwards. Have I done? I haven't done these. I'm, I'm no. trying to be back with uh, where I where I left off at. Okay. Uh, mm -mm -mm. When not, what's up, Edna? What's going on, Edna? If you're still in here, you All recovered right, hey, yet? Here we go. What's going on, Sandra? Say so I'm going on a carnival conquest in October to Cozumel. What are the theme nights that carnival does? Depends on the duration of the cruise. So Cozumel usually falls within a five day. So usually they have a white night, uh, 80s party. Is it 80s party? To me, the 80s and the glow party are the same thing, in my opinion. <laughs> so just, just, just prepare right in the middle for that. And then your elegant night. That's usually it. But honestly, they are up to the cruise director. So as much as we have this streamlined thing of oh this is what they have on the five day this is what right. they have on the seven day you really honestly don't know it's just up to the cruise director of what events they want to have on board i wish they did make it easy for they, you to know i wish to it would definitely help you on the because it makes you so. feel like you don't know how to yeah. answer the question because unless you are a stalker of that cruise director you don't you know. even know right all right, let me see what's going on. Reaching freedom, I like that hey. name. Reaching freedom. What is the best off season for cruises? In my opinion, most people don't think it's off season, but for me personally, I like April and May. Kids are still in school. <laughs> the prices haven't started to surge yet. There are some people that love like the the January and the Februarys. I mean, I probably wouldn't mind it, but right. for me, because I'm such a seasonal person, in my mind, those are the months that I'm chilling. <laughs> now, don't look at last year and the year before that. We've been all over the place. But usually those are the months that I chill. So April, May, and then I like to pick up again off season, like the end of September and October. We did it, and I was like, I really like this. It's right. not super hot. Kids back in school. And... It was more enjoyable, in my opinion. Yeah. Like you didn't, you weren't frying to death. All right. What's going on, Rosalind? Rosalind, say, how much is port parking in Orlando? I don't know off the top of my head. And you should really be concerned if I could quote that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah. But parking is usually not that much. Either, yeah. Um, it usually yeah. It ranges yeah. between like $12 and $16 a yeah. day. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, 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 uh. So that's where we was frozen again. Okay, that's a good one. All right. What's going on, Christy? Hey, Christy. Christy's question is, if you're driving to the port, how far do you feel is too far to drive to a port the day of embarkation day? We're four hours from Charleston Port. I don't think that's too bad. Mm -hmm. Um. 
but I wouldn't do more than four. If it's more than four hours, dr um, drive on in. But even with you being four hours away, leave out super early. Because if anything happens on the road, at least you have an opportunity to course correct. All right. So Pumpkin um, Tutu said, do they hey. check what's inside your luggage? Absolutely. Yeah, they do. They put your luggage through scanners. So if they see anything through the scanner that is of concern, then they will open it up and examine it further. Yep. All right. So, so Andre asks, do I need to leave my luggage unlocked? That's a good question. I would. I mean, yeah. if you use a TSA approved lock, they can get into it anyway. Right. Um, but honestly, I don't if put you locks. don't use a TSA lock, they, they still can get they, into yeah, it. Yeah, they still can get <laughs> into it. Get so honestly, we just going to go ahead and not even do that, in my opinion. All right. Say, yeah, something looks suspicious. They're going to yeah, open it up. They're going to open it up. All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next section because I don't see that many more questions regarding that section. So the next section is going to be Embarkation Day. Ooh. So up on the screen momentarily, I'm going to put up the stuff that you should know about Embarkation Day. And if you have any questions around that for the for the travel agent, start asking away. Let's see, where are you? Where are me? I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm I know here. I know I put it in there. You did. Uh, give me a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna add it back in here again because uh we're gonna we we're gonna make this thing happen. All right, we need embarkation day. Of course, I click on everyone but embarkation. Of course, day. there it is. Here we go. All right, here we go. Embarkation day. I need to take Andre's message down so you guys can see. So let me do it like this and like that. There we go. So this, these are the four things that we say you should be aware of um, for embarkation day, and that's arriving at the port. Some of you guys already asked that those type of questions. The check-in process. That's your documentation. Uh, that's your boarding pass. Uh, your steps to uh, your first steps to when you're getting on the ship. Like you having the questions around attending the mustard station, any tips around um, your first day activities, and then also your important your carry on bag because uh, some of you did ask about the check luggage, mm -hmm. so the carry on bag stuff like what you should put in there, like your medication, your boarding documents. So if you have any questions around embarkation day, please put them in the chat. Let's now. do it. What? Samuel said a lady got theirs confiscated over a my oh what over <laughs> a mouse. Wait what? <laughs> Hey, Jaylani, welcome. What's up, fam? All if y'all right, coming see. on in, make sure y'all hit the like button, the thumbs up. That's your way of speaking. All right, let's see. So, we got anything? Mm -mm. That's, that's, a, good that's one. a good one. What's going on, T TKP again? Question Is there a Costco or Sam's or any other store where you can get? Your drinks, sodas, can HTO, champagne, wine, etc. Without me even knowing where you are, there's always going to be a Sam's yeah. at a Costco. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you're going to have a better luck going to like a Walmart or a Target somewhere um, closer by wherever it is that you are. But let me give you one better. Everybody is door dashing these days. Yeah. That's what we have done when we've gone and we wanted to do the wine. I don't even bother with the sodas no more these days. But I'll just get DoorDash to bring wine if it's, you know, if they permit that in the state that you're that you're sailing from and just get them to bring it over. Is it upcharged a little bit? Yeah, but you're going to have to pay to go to Costco or Walmart anyway, so right. just let them bring it to you, just bring it on board. What's going on, Alicia? Alicia X is Carnival still allowing you to choose a boarding time on embarkation day? Or are they assigning your boarding time? No, you can you can select that and you do that within your check-in process, which is two weeks before your sailing date. So, but if you wait too late to do it, then your options are going to be limited because everybody that sat up at midnight to get the good slots, they're probably already going to be gone. Yep. <clears throat> yep. All right. Andre has another question. Andre said, how long um, with it before the luggage makes it? Oh, okay. How long does it take for your uh, luggage to make it to your room? How will they know? Is How will I know it's there? 
uh, what's the best time to board the ship? Okay, so that last part we answered earlier. Yeah. But how long does it take for your luggage to make it to the ship? Honestly, yes, it's no way to really answer that because it depends on one, did they have to check it twice? Um, to how many pieces of luggage they have, and they're just getting to your floors. Really realizing that if you ever look and look at how many pieces of luggage they handle, yeah, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, thousands. <laughs> I'm talking about thousands just think time. about you have three thousand um three thousand people on the ship, and you have one piece of luggage for each of those people. That's three thousand pieces, but most people do two pieces of luggage. Yeah, so that's, that's a, a lot. lot. That's a lot. <laughs> we have had luggage delivered within almost down near when we got to the room and then we've had times where we've gone almost to dinner time and it showed up right. so it's really no way of saying but how will you know you don't i mean unless you have like a luggage tag where you're constantly tracking it and even those are not like accurate accurate you just know that it's on the ship with you right it's more of just opening your door peeking seeing that's basically it all right, so next question is coming from Unprotected Lex. Hey. What's going on, fam? Say so on embarkation day, if your time is 2 30, what do you advise? What time what time, okay, what time do you advise being there? 2 15, 2 o'clock at the most. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you don't want to come too early where they feel like you're just trying to break the rules and go in a little earlier. Some ports are more stricter than others. Um, but We've had it in Norfolk where if you come too early, you got to sit on the curb. Right. Because what you're ultimately doing is messing up their flow. But I've also been to Miami and have gotten there earlier than I even expected to get there. And they're like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's going on, Jaylani? Jaylani said, do the ships usually leave on time on embarkation day? They usually do. There are instances where things just go wrong or... Um, I don't know if it's if it's a <clears throat> customs or border patrol that lets that clears them to go ahead and sail out. I mean, there are instances where they can't pull out, and then if you have people that are refusing to do the muster, they most of them will not pull out until you have a hundred percent participation in the safety briefing. So yeah, that can hold up the ship as well. But for the most part. It's on a schedule. Mm -hmm. It is a well oiled machine. And they got they got some wiggle room for mistakes. Yes. Yes. But most of the time, they're going to be on that schedule. Hello. Yeah. All right. Hey, Trey. Uh, what's going on again, Trey? Say, is Carnival still doing the modified mustard drill? Yeah, yes, they are. They we are. love it. And we pray yeah. they'll ever get rid of it. I it do. I do like this, yeah, this hybrid. All right. Now the question from Andre, how do I order waters to have it in my room? Um, you do that through the fun shops. If you are using a travel agent, just let them know. And what we do is we make the charge on your behalf and have it waiting for you. It has gone up. It used to be, a f it's still affordable, but now it's kind of double. So for like 12 bottles of water, you're paying like 11, 12 bucks now. Right. And it used to be like five or six bucks. But yeah, you have to do that prior to getting on the ship. You can't get on the ship and and try to get that same deal. It doesn't work. Right. All right. What's going on, Mama Mia? Is there a max amount of on of amount of over the counter uh, meds that you can take? That's one of those gray area questions. Yeah. I would take enough that if something were to happen on the ship and there's a delay, that you have enough medication to cover you. But I wouldn't take as much to have them like, what's she doing? Like, she's selling <laughs> perks. Like, I don't want them to be alarmed that why, why you got 100 pills <laughs> on you right now? So, you know, and then if there's something that you have to take and you have to take it in abundance, then make sure that you're carrying that in your bottle that has the recommended dosage on it so that if there is a question that you could be like, hey, this is what I'm supposed to take. Right. All right. So I'm going to do two more questions in this section and then we're going to move on to life on board. So I'm going to do Nisi's question. How many soda cartons can you bring? 
So it's 12 cans per person. And I made a mistake of saying 24 one yeah. time. And y'all yeah, when you said it, and I, and I, tried to, I tried to fix you up and be like, uh, 24 cans. I was trying to like, <laughs> but I, you wouldn't fix it. So everybody that's experts now, it's 12, it's 12. <laughs> it's 12 per person. But to be honest, if you just want to bring multiples, I have never, ever, ever seen them be like, oh, no, it's just 12 for you. Honestly, when we go with our family, we put ours on like a luggage cart and we just have like when we do it, because I don't even be doing it no more. Um, had like five or six of them stacked <laughs> in on the thing and just one person takes it through and nobody questions like who do those belong to? Um, they really not really. Shit. They ain't making money off of sodas. <laughs> right. All right. We got the next question coming in from Trucking Gail. My marriage license maiden name doesn't uh name doesn't match my birth certificate because I didn't change it before I remarried. Would this be an issue? Most I'm of the time name. it's not an issue, but I would bring that supporting documentation because most people's don't match. Mine don't match. But um just bring it. Most people don't have a problem, but I would rather for you to have the proof of why than to be like, I don't have it with me. More than likely, you're not gonna need it. All right, thank you, uh, TKP, for the 199 super sticker. We appreciate, yes, appreciate it. it. All right, so now we get ready to move on to life on board. And just remember, at the end, we are going to open it up for broad question and answers. We just want to make sure that each person get their questions answered in each section. All right, so we doing life on board. So here we go. Mm hmm. So life on board includes like, you know, your main dining, specialty dining, restaurants, buffets, um, anything about reservation, reserving, uh, excursions, reserving dining, um, activities like your daily schedule that they put out every day, entertainment, shows, the pools, onboard events, and then also your onboard spending account. You having a question about that, setting that up. Um, and any tips on managing your expenses. So mm -hmm. begin to put those in the comments. And I'm waiting. Do, 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 All right. So this question, I think, uh, was a part of the last one, but it fits this one. What's that? This one. Okay. All right. So first question is coming from Pumpkin, Pumpkin Tutu. Tutu again. So the holes that they put on your card, how long do they last? Depends. Yeah, I get ready to say it depends on your bank. It depends on your bank. Mm -hmm. And you can't call your bank and tell them, hey, release my hole. Because most of them will not do it because it's kind of like an automated system. And even when the charges have cleared, I've heard some people say the charges will last up to 30 days. I don't know. And sometimes the bank does that based on your previous banking history with them. So if you're a person that have had a couple of NSFs or bouncing, like people don't write checks no more. But, you know, bouncing of checks and stuff, they will put longer holds wow. onto your transactions. Um, I used to work in banking, so I've seen people deposit and their stuff is released the next day. I've seen right. people deposit and don't a have week. a good history. Right. And it could be a couple of weeks. Yep. So so it's really no way to say. That's why I tell people don't just don't, don't <laughs> do the do debit it. card. Do, if, do the credit card. Do a credit card do or do cash. cash. Do the cash when you get on board. Yeah. All right, what's going on, Paul? Paul's question is, can I wear Skechers in the dining room? They don't really care, right? But on elegant, elegant night, night, you yeah. you could get into a little snag with that because even my husband, yeah, and he know the rules, and he wore cargo shorts, and they were the dressy kind of cargo shorts on M um elegant night, and they turned him away and said. Yeah, about that. <laughs> you could you could basically go somewhere else, but not in here. Right. And I do like that when you make a rule, be consistent across the board. There's no need to get offended by it. But I wouldn't wear sketches on on elegant night. Right. You can get away with it all the time. Yeah. All right. Next question is coming from EMC 14360. Question Do you recommend the drink packets? Depends. It depends. If you're a drinker. And yes. you know you're a drinker. drinker. Yes. yes. But yes. if you're questioning it, I already can feel that you're really not a drinker. Like, yeah. you, you'll you turn up on vacation like we do. And we have did it once. And I've never purchased it again because I just felt like the amount of money that I spent, I drank because I didn't want to lose my money. Right. Because I'm emotionally attached to my dollars. 
Yeah. So if you're a drinker, you know you're a drinker. You yeah. know you throw them back like one after another. You ain't taking no breaks. It's time to drink. Yeah, that's that's yeah. what you do. Yeah, you that's what you do. Yeah. There's so, no doubt about it. It's right. worth it. But if you just a drink, like Quay said, you just vacation drinker. Yeah. Nah, I don't. Yeah. And when I tell you that, like we do vacation drinking, and we don't like, oh, I'm only gonna do this. Like we just we just live in the moment, and we have never come close to paying what we paid for a drink for package. The drink package. Not even close. Not nope. even close. <laughs> yeah. And even with adding everything else to it that we nope. buy around it, don't even come close. Mm -mm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next question is from um Nisha. Is that Nish? Is that Nish? Nish. Question Nish. Are the drinks free in the casino? It's a two-way question. Yeah. No, but if you are gambling enough in the casino, then at some point you could get a, they put a little thing on your sign and sale card. So basically you have gambled enough that now they're going to liquor you up <laughs> and you can start to get free drinks in the casino. So do with that, what you will. Indeed. I got another question from Daryl. Would you recommend to schedule boat on embarkation day or port day? Schedule it yep. as soon as you get on board. Yes. <laughs> Because if you don't, you may not get it. Right. And we we messed around and almost didn't weren't able to do it because everybody books it up as soon as they get on board. The good thing about it is if you have to move it around, they're more flexible to moving it around once you booked. So for instance, oh, I don't want to do it this day. I want to do it this what this day. If they have the room, they'll move you to it. But right. if they are just sold out, you you just a out of luck. All right, we got a super chat from Lonnie. Appreciate it. Appreciate the $5 it. super chat question. If you have funded your sign and sell card uh, with cruise cash, will there be holes? This is my first cruise next Sunday on the horizon. No, cruise no. cash is like guaranteed cash funds that are just put on a card. So, right. no. And they don't put holes on your cash either. No, I get that question a lot. Yeah, it's like no holes. holes on cash. So holes only apply to uh, debit and debit, credit cards. Debit and credit cards because with you know your prepaid with your prepaid cards, the money is like already there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when you do the cruise cash, the bar cash, they already accounting for that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's paid out. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see. Let me go back up here. What's going on, uh, Zalisha? Zalisha. Zalisha. Sorry if I, I pronounced like that. that wrong. I probably pronounced it wrong too. Say hello. My family and I will be on our first, will be first time cruisers, and we printed our luggage Yay. tags. And it says that the family of four should only bring one check bag each. I have a total of five. Would that be okay? You'll be fine. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Just print one of your luggage tags twice. You, it'll be fine. They're not strict on it. No. All right. Next question is coming in from Sandra. What's going on? Sandra said, is the sign and sale and the onboard account two different things? No, they are in conjunction with each other. Yes. So your onboard spending account, the only way to access it is on the sign and sale card. That card is everything on board. Yes. It's your key to your room. It is your access to get off. You have to scan it to get off the ship so that they know that you're off. You have to scan it again to get back on so that they know that they didn't leave you behind. It's also when you want to buy a drink, if you want to go somewhere and buy something out of the candy shop or one of the shops on board, they don't take cash. They don't take card. It's your sign and sale card for everything. The only place that takes cash is the casino. And you put that into a machine. Otherwise, it's a cashless vacation until right. you get off of that ship. Then they'll take your cash. But on board, everything is trackable. <laughs> yes. All right. Let me see if we move on to the next question. I see it's almost 300. Is that almost 300? Yeah, almost 300 yeah. of us in the house. Don't forget to smash it. that like button when you come in the door. Even with us having the mishap of being yeah, in and out man, twice. We appreciate I think that. we might be back, y'all. I think yeah, we might I be think back. We're back. I don't hear no more storm clouds. So I, I yeah. can hear storm. No, you can hear storm clouds, but. Anyway, um, we're not going to talk about don't that. Don't it, it don't even matter. <laughs> just keep it moving. <laughs> All right. Mama Mia has another question. Um, is it a, is it best to wait to reserve the specialty restaurant closer to your cruise or mm -hmm. or would you schedule that early on? 
schedule it early on. I mean, it's not like going down the road is going to give you a discount or anything like that. Right. So if you know it's something that you want to do, just go ahead and do it. Because, for instance, those um those um popular ones, steakhouses, um, the tapenaki, they sell out. And once they sold out, most of the time you have to go on board and see if someone cancels and, you know, if you can get the spot. But other than that, do it early. Same thing with excursions. If you see an excursion that you want, don't think about it. Reserve it. Because if you're thinking about it and it's a popular one, everybody else is too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We had tried for like two years to do ATVs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it's always sold out. Yep. All right. This question is from Charlene. What's going on, Charlene? Charlene says, my daughter is 10 years old, very mature. I understand what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, ours is too. Uh, not, not our, our daughter, daughter. Our niece. <laughs> our nieces. Yeah. She wants to be able to room on her own while on board. I'm not worried about her, but I'm but you say I'm not worried about her, but I am not sure what to tell her thoughts. Okay. Face blue, star okay. eyes. <laughs> okay. Can I do I have permission to talk to you like uh big sis? Uh, I might be younger than you. I don't know. Um, do I have permission, y'all? I got permission. Because I am so a mama bear and I have no kids, right? But I am such a person that I am protective of all children, is I would never allow a 10-year-old to roam by themselves. Nope. Because although we go on vacation and we think that everybody is there to have a free and, you know, carefree moment and da, 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 people with bad intentions are everywhere and they're on vacation too. Yep. So for that reason, don't ever allow a 10 year old to roam by themselves. Give them some freedoms. Yes. Because they are on well, vacation too. But yes, make sure that they are always where there's an adult or someone right. that is keeping an eye on them. Right. Um, we travel with our family and we don't play them games. If my cousin wants to go to the club with her husband at night, bring them kids over here. Somebody's going to stay behind and watch these kids because we're just not going to have them like kid clubbing it up all night or they in the room and sneaking out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because we know, I mean, we've been kids before too. Yeah. So we know how it go. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Let's see. So Delicia says, Delicia says, uh, where do you set up cash on my sign and sale card? You have to do that in person. So you when do you that as soon as you get on board, go to guest services or go to one of the kiosks. Honestly, if it's your first cruise, just go to guest services because if you have any questions, they can answer those questions like, oh, what time do I have to come back and retrieve my cash that I didn't spend or whatever? Just go to guest services. And usually the line is not that bad on embarkation. And if you do it soon as you get on board. Right. So we at. All right, we got another question from Andre. How can we find out about the attire for Elegant Night? I heard that it could be uh cruise. Oh, we, we, already did, read that. we did that one. I can really say my yeah, deja vu. Yeah, we did that one. <laughs> yeah, that was a deja vu. Uh, yeah, hey, we're great question. Um, Chastity, do the C Day brunch be in the main dining room? Yes, yes. it is in the main dining room, and I get this question a lot. Is it included in your cruise fare? Yes. So it's no additional charge to go and sit down in the dining room to eat um, brunch on your sea days. Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, Andre, I see people answered in the comments. Yeah, the boat is the roller coaster on the Mardi Gras and the celebration. And the Jubilee. And, the Jubilee. and I would never do it again. It was <laughs> fun, though. But I, ooh, I thought my soul was gone. <laughs> it doesn't look like it's that fast or scary, but it is. Uh, uh, Trey, yes, you, um, Trey asks, uh, pick it back from Lonnie's question. Let's say I use, um, um, cruise cash and, and put, I don't know, $50, but I also put my credit card for anything else. Does the credit card still get holes? Yes. Yeah. Anytime the credit yes. card is on file, it's going to get the holes. And that's, and that's so they can make sure 
that the funds is going to be present on there. So it's mm -hmm. the amount they hold is, is between a hundred to two hundred dollars, and it all depends on the length of your sale. I think the five day is a hundred, and I think seven is two hundred. Don't quote me, kind of have on this site, yeah, but just know on site. there's going to be at least a hundred dollar hold, you know, and when that you, happens when you, before you even get on board, right? Is that <laughs> yeah, I've had people be like, Lynette, I'm not even on board, and I got my um, yeah. Mm -hmm. That hold is going to be there because now they're doing their checks and balances. Lonnie. They're like, hey, let's see if you're ready. Are you good for it? <laughs> All right. So Jelani said, how much money do you guys usually take? Well, oh, I was going to, y'all will try to answer once. Well, we used to, do, yeah, we used to do 500. And then he until, got bougie. Until inflation. He got bougie. <laughs> Everything costs a little bit more now. So, <laughs> so most of the time now we take anywhere from... Uh, it's eight? still not a lot. Well, it is a lot, but <laughs> from maybe six, six to eight, six to eight hundred, and we usually yeah. bring. And when I say bring it back, we usually are bringing it back. Bring it back, yeah. Cause... Well, not all of it, majority of it back. Yeah, because we do everything pre boarding, so I don't like to be the person that's shelling out money while I'm on vacation, unless it's tipping or you know we're out somewhere. Yeah. So a rule of thumb, uh, I would KJ. say. Hey, right, what's going on, James? I was what's just that? thinking about you early. I was thinking about you earlier. Yeah, yeah. I was in your chat the other day. Y'all was cutting up. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to speak, but I was like, let, let me just watch. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say this. Uh, yeah, so our minimum used to be 500. We tell people to do 500. Mm -hmm. We have not talked about the new minimum. So I would say at, at, at least seven at the most. The minimum because stuff costs so much more now. It do. And like it's like Queen said, it don't mean that you're gonna spend it all, mm -mm. but it's it's better to have it and not have it. Yeah. And need it, and then you need it and don't have it. I, I think I said that right, but you understand you got it. where I'm coming from. But if you don't you spend picking it, up what I'm putting down. <laughs> <laughs> you feel good when you come back home and you be like, Man, I gotta take this money back to the uh, bank. I got this cash. And most times we don't make it back to the bank. And no, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't because yeah. <laughs> All right. What's going on, Bronx Chick? Um, the question is, I, I am on a guaranteed cabin for upcoming celebration cruise in mm. two weeks. We haven't received our cabin number yet. Carnival uh, keeps uh, showing us that we will have a cabin. I'm just nervous. I, I feel you. Yeah, if you have a guaranteed cabin and you booked it on a guaranteed cabin rate, you'll get it. But like I said, you could get to the port and they give you your cabin number when you get on board. Like, that's just... Kind of the gamble of a guarantee room. Um, Roshonda, I think the boat was fifteen dollars a person. Mm -hmm. Fifteen, 15 a, person. a person. All right, so uh, we've gotten a lot of questions in that section. Like again, uh, we're gonna do some blanket questions towards the end anyway. So we're gonna move on to step number five, which is the next to the last step, which is shore excursions and port days. Uh, so if you have any question around that, so I'm gonna put that up on the screen so you can see exactly what type of questions that you may have around that let's see no nope, that's my embarkation day mm, 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 mm. there you go again i know i put this in here you did yeah but it's all right that's all right i'm, I'm putting it i'll put it in there again there we go sorry about that y'all Bear with me. There we go. It's been one of those days. You can take that um comment down. Take the comment down. All right. So in section five, short skirts and report days. So we get stuff like um what you know you having a question around um booking your excursions through on the cruise line or independent um operator. We get that sometimes, and then mm -hmm. also must see sites based upon popular destinations. So do you have any, any questions about excursions and destinations? Say this is about to get good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. That's what you said. Just got back from Bimini, loved it. Yeah, Bimini. it is like Bimini is one of those places, either you love it or you oh. hate it. There's no in between because it is it's for the beach bum. If you're a beach person and it's what you want to do is just relax, be in the clear crystal clear blue waters and just be Bimini is amazing. But if you want adventure and all of that, Bimini is not that. <laughs> it is not that. All right. Let's see. 
Yeah, I see Jew said I took 250 and brought back 150. Yep. I try to bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll right. be trying to bring it back. All right, Andre is coming through with the questions today. All right, so this question is how do I get to those nice pool areas you guys went to in Costa Maya Port? Okay. So what you do is, see, I'm going to give you country directions, right? <laughs> so once you get off the ship, you're going to go all the way down to the port area. And then you're going to get into like where the port area opens up and you'll see like excursions on this side where you line up to go to whatever excursion you signed up for. You ain't do that. Go to the left. And then you'll start to see like little shops and things like that. Keep going. You're going to see some dolphins. Keep going. And then you're going to get to where it looks like you hit the end of the road, cut through the restaurant that's right there. Mm -hmm. And once you come out the restaurant, you're going to see the pool. You can't miss it. <clears throat> and then that's where you're going to go and you're going to have be a jamming over there. You, if you're going to hear the music. Yeah. If they still got it going like we had with there, you're going to, you definitely going to hear the music. So back in the day when you used to hunt down a party, uh -huh. you wind the window down, you'd be like, yeah. Oh yeah. They still got it going. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now the question from Jay Liney. Have you been to Cozumel? Yes. Yep. If so, what was your excursion? Mr. Sancho. Mr. Sancho's yeah. and um, because we've been twice. What did we do the first one? I don't know. I don't remember. I can't even remember. I don't yeah, remember. <laughs> I remember, but Mr. Sancho's. Mr. Epic. Sancho's is usually yeah. where everybody goes. Um, It's kind of like a rite of passage. Where did we go? Yeah, it'll, come, it'll pop back in our mind. All right, got a question from Felicina. If I, I hope I said that right. If not, forgive me. How do you dress for a cruise that has multiple things in it, like tubing, zip lining, and the beach all in one? I am like when I first started, I used to like take so much thought into clothing. Mm -hmm. Honestly, comfort and just if you want to be a little cute with it, rompers are always on trend. Like you can't go wrong with a, with a romper, but for the most part, I am a biker shorts girl, mm -hmm. graphic tees or tank tops or crop tops, like hell bathing suits <laughs> and cover ups, like whatever makes you comfortable. Like don't overthink it. Because when you overthink it, then you just bring everything on board and, and you bring half of that stuff back with you. But just just dress for comfort and then dress for style at the same time. There's a happy medium. Right. And then also, we we mentioned this in a few videos. It'd be a good opportunity to bring this up with dressing for a cruise. So the, the, the tips that we give is where we came from. Right. Like, we got here. So, like, so, on our first cruise, we were falling up in the cabin with bags. We had two... Big old bags, almost ready to cuss. We had two big old bags. <laughs> big old carry-on bags. We falling up there. I mean, all of them is loaded down full of stuff. So I said it to say on your first cruise, even though you're getting all these tips from us, it doesn't guarantee that you're not going to overpack. But I can guarantee you this. You'll get better. You'll get better over time. When you start going, like we say, we don't do no jeans, but you might be like, you know what? I don't I give like a my fuck jeans. what y'all say. I'm taking my jeans. Go ahead and take your jeans and see how, how you come out. So if you sweat it and you come out <laughs> sweaty, be like, you know, I wish I wish to do them about them jeans. So I said it to say your experience is going to make you a better cruiser, better packer. And you go. We just want to make sure that you got all your, your, your stuff needed so that you won't have an experience mm -hmm. because you didn't have everything you need. Like on our first cruise. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next question is coming from TKP again. Excursion for a person with mobility issues, ABC Island. Most ports these days, and with the exception of when we went to Greece, are exceptional when it comes to mobility. Because most of them have to have or be ADA compliant for these ships to even be there anyway. I'm not saying that there's going to be a nice, clean path um, way everywhere you go. But those mo most of those like port areas are fine. Like right. unless you are a person that have a tender port, which ABC, I don't think the ABC, off the top of my <laughs> head, I don't think the ABC Islands is a tender port. Other than that, most of them are, are great. Now, will there be excursions that you could possibly go on? And it depends on like, if you are in a scooter or something right. like you just may have like a cane like i don't know that so it just depends but most excursions are not geared towards people that have like mobility scooters and stuff like it sucks yeah they really need to get better with that 
Um, but it's I not. agree. All right, we got another question from uh Nesh. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Uh, how do we how do you know where to go and what time to meet if you book the excursion through Conoval? That's an excellent That's a question. question. Yeah. Because you don't know unless you've done it before. Right. So what they do is on board with Carnival, maybe sometimes they do it on the first day, but around the time, maybe a day before you're due to go on this excursion, they'll put your tickets in an envelope and they'll either slide it under your door or they'll put it in the mailbox outside of your cabin door. In that, it gives you the meetup place. You have to bring those tickets to that meetup place. Sometimes they'll put an armband on you or they'll, you know, tear the ticket, give you the other half of it. And then they will transport you to excursion and then back onto the ship. Right. All right. So you'll have all the information um, once you, after you get on board. Mm-mm-mm. All right, let's see. <clears throat> hey, Danny. What's going on? I, see I was... you in about a month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. All right, Alicia asks the Doom Buggers. Please tell us more. I love to. Uh, I, I must have, the spell check must have got you. It said booth this excursion. Listen, <laughs> prepare to whatever you wear. Prepare to throw it away. Yeah, it, but it depends. So if it's rained beforehand, you're gonna be muddy as heck. If it's just dry, you're gonna be dusty as heck. Make sure you bring something to tie your hair up with a plastic bag, jerk curl bag, whatever you gotta do, because your hair is gonna have to be washed afterwards. But make sure you also bring. I bought regular like motorcycle glasses the last time, and even they didn't cut it. The people that had the ski glasses, those big ones, they didn't get any dust in their eyes. So I would recommend if you want to do dune buggies, invest in something oh, like yeah. that. Uh -huh. Some dune buggy places will sell provide them yeah. or sell them sell to them you. To you. Yeah. I, I get a little freaked out by putting stuff like that on my face because everybody else don't put it on their face. Mm -hmm. So I just like bringing my own. And also um, a face scarf or something like that because you're gonna need that as well but other than that it's not scary it can be right but just just have fun with it just have fun with it it's, it's fun all right and this question is coming from Roslyn said nassau bahamas what's the best thing to do depends on what you're into mm -hmm. nassau has a lot yeah nassau is one of those ports that you can literally do everything from beaches to stingrays to sharks to dolphins, dolphins yep. um catamarans you could do parasailing like it just depends on what you're into you could even go to atlantis atlantis is a nice place to go you it's cost it costs yeah and now luckily enough carnival has started offering atlantis as an excursion straight through them which i think is awesome they should have been partnered and did that right but you just you have an array of things to do there all right let me see next question is coming in from bronx chick question our ship check-in uh, at midnight tonight, can we still check in without a cabin assignment? Yes, you sure can. All right, I see. I see a super chat hey. from Latoya. Thank you so Thank much you. for the one ninety nine super chat. Six cabins book. Set any discs for doing nope. it? Oh, okay. <laughs> nope. Nope. Mm -mm. I wish. <laughs> Uh, I see somebody say, are you both travel agents? Yes. Y yes and no. Yes. Um, she, yeah. <laughs> He's my sub agent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when we joke about that, it's like real facts. He, yeah. He, he is credentialed. But he doesn't do like head reins like I do. Right. So he, he really got it to legally support me. All right. So we're going to move on to the next section. Uh, and again, like we said, we'll come back towards the end and just do blanket questions. So the next final one is debarkation because you got to get off the ship. <laughs> so let me yeah. go ahead and put that up on the screen. So these are the things that we feel like you should look out for debarkation day, uh, which is uh, selling in your uh, account and packing. 
uh, collecting your luggage, uh, where and how you find your luggage when you get off, if you do your check luggage, uh, post cruise plans. Uh, are you staying in the departure city? Are you headed straight home? All that stuff is to be considered. So if you have any debarkation day question, please put them in the chat right now. You're welcome, Bronx Chick. So while we're waiting on a question, I see Jennifer said, is the land is worth it for a day? Heck yeah. Mm -hmm. Land is beautiful. Heck yeah. Yeah. But like I said, take that call because <laughs> she's expensive. Hey, Q. What's going on, Q? You don't know where you're my Listen, <laughs> I was still laughing at what you put in the chat yesterday. I was like, Q, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> I was too busy to ask for clarification about it. said drinking is an excursion. The drink <laughs> package is an excursion. Right, I see. All right. So Andre just asking the question tonight. Y'all, y'all better thank God for Andre. He giving he giving a good question. How soon should we plan to get off? I think I remember you saying, uh, take your time. Especially if you don't have it. Like if you don't have a early flight where you feel like you got a hustle and bustle, take your time and get off. If, especially if you drove there, what are we rushing for? Because traffic's gonna be a nightmare. <laughs> Getting out of wherever you are is probably not gonna be as smooth as you want it to be. So take your time. Yep. All right. What's up, Danny? Danny asks if the ship docks at 8 a.m. Realistically, what time am I getting off the ship? Realistically, probably about 10, 30, 11 o'clock yeah. is about the time. Um, we tell people do not book a flight before noon on um, disembarkation day because yeah. you don't know. Even though the ship is there, customs could hold that ship up and don't clear it. So... Guess what? You did a flight that's too early. You don't buck your day up. <laughs> All right. Uh, Trey says, uh, why does uh, disembarkation uh, suck so much? It doesn't. Because you, <laughs> well, I, I guess you say it it's just because it's time to get off the ship. You ain't ready it to get off. It does suck because yeah, you, you have to get off. Gotta get off. Yeah. But we got to admit, like, we, we, we do Miami. Miami disembarkation is so smooth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the only bad that we had was with our home port, North which they are better now. They way better <laughs> they now. Way, way better. But yeah, yeah, this this markation does suck when you ain't ready to get off the ship. Mm -hmm. Same All right. Okay. Oh. Go ahead. What's up, Chastity? Hey, Question. Chastity. Would you guys head straight home or stay uh in a room in the city? Stay in Rome, the city. Stay baby. in Rome, the city, yeah. Okay. So if you know our personalities, we are introverts that have extrovert tendencies which basically means when we're on vacation you would never know we're an introvert but the day mm -hmm. that we have to get off of that ship get me to buck home yeah. <laughs> i don't Straight want home. i don't want to see nobody else i want to go home i want to put all of my clothes in the laundry i want to get my house back the way it is buck a roam in the city i want to go home <laughs> <laughs> that's just my personality there are some people that be like Oh, let's make it a whole nother day. Or uh -huh. I got a later flight. Now I have done this because sometimes the flights just work out where you have to leave later. I'll do hotel like a um day um day stay. Yeah. What is Res it? Resort for a day. Re resort for a day and just hang out at a resort, use their amenities, get a room if that's available, and do it that way. But to actually like make it a like an extension of my vacation. Mm -mm. Mm. That's not my personality. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we got. All right. Jaylani got another question. Is there a certain time that you should be off the ship? I'm thinking of waiting for the crowd to leave and chill till then. So here's a, even though I tell you don't wait, I mean, don't rush to get off the ship. I also have to warn you and say that there is a time where you have to get out of your room. Yes. Because they have to turn that ship over. They got to clean and change the linens, do all of that, get get it prepared. Because right behind you is a whole nother shipload of people that's getting ready to take that room that you are just in. And so you usually will have to take your stuff and move to another area. When we hang out, we usually just go and sit in the casino. The casino's not open. The chairs are there. We lounge in. And literally, it's like a comedy show amongst all the people that's sitting there with you. So just keep in mind that even though you can take your time getting off, 
at a certain point, you're going to have to get out that room, though. Yeah. And what's going to happen is the people that are cleaning the room, they're going to smile at you. Hello. And, and <laughs> you know, say you got to get out the room, but you can see in their eyes, their eyes are going to say, get the fuck out this room. So I can do my Let's job. Do my job. Yeah, because they got to get the rooms ready by 1 30. Mm. All right. Next question is coming from Mama Mia. Is everything open on the ship on this um, disembarkation day? No. Yeah. Hot, nothing's really open. Like yeah, they're going to feed you yeah. and get out. <laughs> feed you and get out. It is not even every food venue is open either. It's quick eats, a buffet. Let's go. All right. Let's see. Any more debarkation day questions? Mm -hmm. Let me see. Here we go. All right. Hey, Joe. What's up, Joe? Joe asks, planning their cruise to Miami, is there transportation available from the port to the airport? There's Miami. You're never going to have yeah, a problem. Get that. Yeah. <laughs> open your app, Lyft, Uber, and they have a section off of the sidewalk where it's dedicated. It's just like the airport where it's dedicated for ride share. Go over there. And then there's some people that have like their cabs and they'll just be like, hey, I'll take you to the airport for $10. I don't do that because <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if you just pulled up on this curb. I don't know you. But at least on the app, it's been vetted out a little bit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I see it's 325 of you guys in the house. Don't forget to smash that like button when you come in the door. Hey, yo. All right. All right. So I see we got a super chat from Arisha Haynes. Thank you for hey, the $10. I appreciate that. Uh, we greatly, greatly appreciate that. So all right, let's go back up for some more embarkation day questions. Let me see. All right. Next question from TKP. If if I don't have an early flight, do you recommend taking your luggage off rather than outside the door the night before? For me personally, it's always easier for me just to take it off myself anyway. Um, but it just depends. Like some people love to give it to them the night before. I'm the kind of person that I know if I send it down there, then I'm going to have to leave a whole lot of stuff out. And I got to contend with that the next day. I just take my stuff off. But it just depends on how you want to do it. They, I mean, they have it down to a science. Yeah, they so do. don't worry about it being like yeah. this major delay of you getting your luggage if you check it. Right. You know, and you have to, to retrieve it. Now, they got it down to a science. I, it's impressive. Because yeah. I look at it, I'll be like, Lord, I see 100,000 black suitcases. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Miss Beth said, can I carry my luggage off the ship with me when I leave the yep, ship? Yep, that's sure, what I do. You sure can. So, Trey said, yep, that's what I meant, Stanley. So, Trey was talking about being sucked, having to get off the oh, ship. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Getting off is not usually a problem. Now, the birth certificate line is usually long. But if you have um, a passport, you you don't even hardly have to scan them these days. You just They have face rec recognition. You just walk off the ship these days. Yeah. All right. Another question for Mr. Andre. Are they still serving food on embarkation day so you can eat before getting off the ship? Yes. Oh, disembarkation day? Yes. I mean, disembarkation, yes. Yeah. No, embarkation. He Got said it. embarkation, but we I said thinking, getting off. Yeah. yeah, getting off. Yeah, they did. Yeah. yeah, they'll feed you now. Yeah, stuff open like what, Blue Iguana Wanna, is usually open. Mm, uh, some the buffet. Time, yeah, the buffet. Um, it's quickies now. Yeah, stuff you can go and grab and go. Yeah. Oh, let's see. All right. What's going on, Brittany? Hey, Brittany. Say, question. I made a live. Congrats. Hey. Uh, my husband and I typically book a suite when it comes which uh, comes with priority boarding and mm -hmm. debarkation. If we add a balcony room for our 16-year-old, would he be a uh, priority? Technically, no, but they're not going to separate you from your 16-year-old. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, no, but you'll be okay. Uh, let me see. Any more debarkation day? Let's see. Uh, all right. Next question is from Nish. Uh, can you still buy drinks on the debarkation day while you are waiting to get off? Mm -mm. Uh -uh. Nope. So you want to take care of all that stuff the, uh, at least the night before? Anything uh -huh. you want to get? Uh -huh. I'll hold you one back. <laughs> Oh, you're a bear back or something. <laughs> Otherwise, nope. 
they are legit preparing for the next wave of people coming. <laughs> so they're going to feed You're you welcome, and Joe. get off. All right, let me see. Yes, sir, uh, Mark. Um, I don't want to say, do you need a passport for virgins? I saw that. Yes. yes. And it doesn't do. matter where the ship is leaving from or coming yeah. back to virgin, all passports. There's very minimal room for them not to do it. All right. Let's see. What's up, Dawn? Thank you hey, so Dawn. much Thank for you. the 199 super sticker. Appreciate that. Okay. He asked why. I'm a, can I tell you the reason I believe? One, their company, their rules. That's first. So, but two, it's also a way to vet out the passengers on board. And when I say that, let me explain. People that have gone through the process of getting a passport know how tedious and how nerve wracking and how much of a weight that is yeah, to do. Yeah. So these are the people that are not going to get on a ship and cause no ruckus. Right. These people love their travel privileges and are usually people that fly in and out of destinations. They don't want no smoke when it comes to not being able to do that. For me, I believe that Virgin has set up their way of doing business modeling so that the people that usually are the problematic ones at sea mm -hmm. are not passport holders. I can tell you that right now. Right. I can <clears throat> tell you that. So passport. Um, so yeah. Virgin was like, OK, we're going to cut a whole lot of our problems right here. We're going to require passports. And guess what? You don't be having them problems on Virgin Voyages. You just don't. Yep. Yeah. What's going on? Big T said, do you recommend leaving your room earlier to be out a little quicker? I don't. But like I said, it all it depends. depends. It depends it, if you got an early flight. If you got that flight that's yeah, right yes. at 12, but, you got to do what you got to do. But if not, you just you just getting off quicker. Yeah, Bronx yes. chick, that passport, man. Yeah, that passport, yeah. And, and look, you're not going to mess the privileges <laughs> up, are you? Nope. Say so somebody step on my foot, you just going to step on my foot. We're not going to fight about it, nothing, because uh -uh. <laughs> I, I got this trip. I got to go on this year. <laughs> Thank you, pretty girl, for hey. the uh, 199 Super Chat. Uh, do your drink package still work on the last day? No. Nah, she cut off. She <laughs> you settled up at that point. Uh-huh. Say so what type of transportation? Every type of transportation. Lyft, Uber. Uh -huh. They also have taxis that's out there. Yep. You have um, and you can also schedule something like through another company. I have done that. They have left me on the curb. Me. They left me on the curb. <laughs> And we had to get a lift. So I don't even go with scheduling and paying for something ahead of time. I just do Uber and Lyft and go about my business because it's there like in two minutes anyway. Right. All right. Good question, Miss Beth. Is there room service on M on M or you mean embarkation no. day or D <laughs> embarkation day? No, but if you meant Debarkation is still no. Well, embarkation day at night. Yes. At night, yeah, but like not. But soon debarkation as you get on. day. Um, yeah. yeah. No, let's take nah. it back. It does. It, you have to um do it the night before. Yes. And they will bring it. But it, like, yeah. I, I think she's talking about like on the day. Service like on it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can't request service that day. Right. Said so do dogs sniff, sniff on the uh, departure as well? Yes. yes. Yeah. So they can yes. randomly there. They can randomly do that. There are some dogs that are residents on ships now. Yeah. I think that's just. We say it's too far, but look how far we've come with having the issue on board. So it's like, ugh. <laughs> personally, I don't want a dog sniffing dog. I mean, a drug sniffing dog walking around the ship over because it makes me paranoid. <laughs> yeah, you like, right. like I ain't got nothing. Now. I ain't got nothing, and I feel like I did something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't wow. like when in Miami they just bring the dog around to sniff you. Get the dog away, because it'd be my luck. Because I almost got. I almost got locked up in Jamaica before. <laughs> so every time a dog come near me, I'm like, I'm about to get locked up. All right. So that's going to conclude the four, the, the six sections that we believe that is great to know to take your first cruise. And uh, we appreciate you guys asking the questions within that. But before we move on to the general questions, I do have a question in the chat. Uh, do y'all like it this way? So when we do a first time cruisers live, do it in sections and get to ask questions in sections versus coming on and just you just asking questions randomly. 
Uh, we feel like it's hard to see a lot of questions that way because there's so many be coming in. But I can say from doing it this way, I felt like I was we were able to answer more questions tonight. But you let me know in the comments if you like it this way or would you prefer for us just to be like, Go back. yeah, I like the other way better. <laughs> <laughs> but he said, let's try something different. And I said, all right. All right. Let's see. All right. So I'll start here. T -T uh, TKP says. Are Facebook groups for your selling beneficial? Yes. Very much so. I peeked into a Carnival uh, Horizon <laughs> group and... <laughs> they are very beneficial, but they are also places where a lot of misinformation or bad information can be um, shared. So, I mean, just go into it and eat the meat and spit out the bones. But right. for me, it's more of the community that you build with the people you're going to be with for like five, seven, eight days. And usually... You 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 learn people's personalities, you learn people's faces, and you do in bar crawls together. Some people set up where they do um gift exchange. I just think right. it's a good time to have. I love being able to feel like when I get on board, I know some people, even if it's just you know virtually. Right. All right. And this question is coming in from Queasy Two Times. Hey, I love <laughs> you guys' channel. Hey. I'm a first time cruiser. I just booked with the uh, with Carnival Sunshine out of the hometown of Charleston. Just want to know how many bags can I carry on with me in uh, if I check in. Um, you they don't really care how many mm. you carry on, but you're going to have to tend with that until you get into your room. So, oh, I sound like I was from Baltimore when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> that room. Um, I just carry my backpack. That's enough for me. I don't want to put my have my hands full of a yeah, lot of stuff because like if be you're not in a suite or you haven't booked like faster to the fund that allows you to get into your room early, yeah, you, you gotta, gotta hold, hold, hold it. on to that stuff. You gotta hold on to and that. And you stuff. just can't leave it. Yeah, because not everybody is honest. Is honest. Yeah. Say so you mess around and yeah. you and you curling on gone. <laughs> <laughs> your sandals are gone. Yep. You see somebody wearing a pair of your sandals. <laughs> <laughs> be like, be like um uh coming to America and left their bags outside. Somebody we, said we frozen. And, Hold on. We, we frozen? frozen again. Andre said we frozen. I can see us. Let me see. I yeah. think we good. We good, y'all. We good. Oh, he retracted it. Oh, okay. All right. Let me see. Uh next. Next one coming in from LaRonda Richardson. What's up, LaRonda? Hey, LaRonda. I am an agent. Oh, uh, I booked a room for a 20-year-old with a 20-year-old and an 18-year-old and a 16-year-old. I got a call from Carnival stating that he had to be in a room with an adult over 21. Have you had that experience? I haven't because um, please tell me that somebody else is going with them. Because if you link somebody to their room, and they're in like two or three door proximity to that cabin, you won't have any problems, but you definitely have to follow that, that rule. There is a golden rule about them because they're technically underage and you can't have people that's underage in a room that is not supervised by someone that's over 21 in being in um, close proximity. So you definitely have to have that link. If not, they're going to cancel that booking. All right. I see we got a super chat up. Oh. A super chat from Kyra Rivers. Thank you for the 499. We greatly appreciate it. Just cruised last week and I learned so much from your blogs that really made it easy and fun. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. You are so welcome. That's right, why so we're here. So I see y'all coming in. So Q Michael said that it's more organized. A lot of my question was answered. Hey, uh, Kevin. LaRonda said either way is cool. Uh, Monica said I like it this way. <laughs> Y'all just want to go against me. Latai said, I'm not doing it well, but I still love your content. Appreciate that. Uh, let me see. Angel of Wishes. Uh, Marilyn B said, I like it the new way. Go back to um, Angel of Wishes. I don't think we answered that. Uh, I would just, oh, oh okay. I'm, I'm going to go back. I'm, okay. I'm seeing what, what everybody's saying I like about. The I like the structure. It stays on topic. Yes. Yes, this was great. Okay. Okay. All this right. was nice. Whatever is easier okay. for you to. Yeah, it's. Yeah, we like to do what's easier Good. for us, but we here to add value to you. We want to make sure that you that you have a stress cre stress cree. What is cree? <laughs> what the hell is cree? <laughs> what? Let me take another drink. It is ain't alcohol. I'm yeah, it's say, water. Please clarify it's that. It's water in here. <laughs> <laughs> you can you do a fresh cree. 
<laughs> but you can have a uh, stress free and fun cruise. So we appreciate you. So, so I like the sections. Okay, okay. All right, we got it. All right, we mm. appreciate it. All right, let me see where we at. Um, oh, so we answered that one. All right, go back to that one. Which one? This one? Yeah. All right. And this question is from Anisha of Wishes 7. Question. I work at a casino and was told that due to my game uh, gaming, gaming license, I can't bet or play at the casinos of the okay. same brand. Okay. Are Carnival uh, cr- uh, casinos run by a certain brand or are they their own thing? It is a brand, but I can't tell you what it is right now off the top of my freaking head. But go to... um. Go to Carnival.com, go down to the bottom, and there will be a section that talks about casinos, and it will tell you the name, the branding that it is under, um, and see if that's, if it aligns with you being able to gamble on board. All right, let's see. <laughs> Ashington said, I'm that way too. I don't mm. like my hands full. No, yeah, I don't. Like I, don't. My, yeah. I like to be, yeah. And then we're recording too. So we're trying, yeah. like, we have our, you know, selfie stick or gimbal and we're doing our things. So I definitely have to be hands off. And then, <clears throat> you know, we're meeting a lot of people on board. You know, we, we've gotten to that <laughs> where a lot of people <laughs> recognize us. So I don't want to be like, oh, let me put my bags down. You know, I like to greet people and hug up on people and right. show you love. Show you some love. Yeah. yeah. All right, another question from Mama Mia. We are bringing our son's friend, 17 years old. Do we need a special power attorney or do or anything besides a passport and birth certificate and ID? Um, go to carnival.com and go to the section about bringing minors that are not your own on board. There are specific things that you have to have signed off on when bringing someone's child that's not your own. Um, not power of attorney-ish, but it's definitely something that has to be signed off on. All right. So couples of the sea say how bad is theft on carnival ships and what does carnival do about it? There's theft everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've never had anything taken from me, thankfully. Nah. Um, and when it comes to Not employees, I've never felt like an employee would do anything. Cause to be honest, they love the fact that they're able to work and provide for their families and send that money back home. So for the most part, you don't have to worry about an employee touching a thing of yours right. because that's their job if they do. But when it comes to other passengers on board, like everybody is just not honest. Everybody right. doesn't go on vacation and have good intentions. There's opportunists nope. everywhere. What does Carnival do about it? We don't know. <laughs> I mean, they will try to do something, but at the end of the day, once you get off board and your loss is your loss, is there like a full on investigation about something that's taken? I seriously doubt it. I'm gonna right. be honest with you. That's probably not the answer most people are looking for, but it's it's about it. I'm not being rude, I'm just saying what needs to be said. <laughs> Oh, uh, Latoya says Stanley is speaking in speaking in cursive. That, that, that's what I felt like I was speaking in too. <laughs> I thought you were about to speak in tongues in a minute. Ooh. All right. Eric says, does the Wi-Fi package work well? Depends, Depends on what ship. Yeah, that's what you're saying. Depends on what ship. And and it's no way to know. <laughs> um, the yeah. magic for us has never been great. Never. We've just got off of um, Virgin. Virgin's Wi-Fi usually is immaculate. Mm -hmm. This time we had to upgrade because it just was not working well. So it's just luck of the draw, I guess. CBD, they All say right. no. Oh, we, got, we got we got to do a problem because she done, she done gave us a hey. super chat. What's up, Dawn? Thank you for the one ninety nine super chat. Only CBD oil in a vape pen. Am I good or not? Not, not, <laughs> yeah. I yeah. just just do with that what you will. Yeah, you're not good, but yeah, but you probably be. now just do with that what you will. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me make sure. Uh, say so you ain't gonna say that said it. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, make sure I'm not. Can you control the AC? Yes. I mean, yeah. but at, I mean, it's going to tap out now. It's not going, you're not going to get it cold. Like if you want it like Antarctic, no, it's going to go to a certain level. Uh, 
I've you're welcome. Had you're issues. welcome, Mario. Mario said, thanks for answering all the burning questions. You are so you're welcome. You're so welcome. All right. All right. You, Love your thumbnail. YouTube Gossip says, I want to sneak in weed. Is it easy? I'm not answering that. <laughs> just, <laughs> just put it this way. Carnival has a whole campaign. About it now. About it now that they they got their eyes open wide for it now. So Hey, how about this? Y'all in the chat, is it easy to do? Because I know my audience. Uh-huh. <laughs> Let them know. <laughs> I'm not answering it. <laughs> All right, let's see. They ain't gonna say the travel agent said yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Matthew? Thank you so much for the 199 super chat. Appreciate it. Appreciate that. Deshaun. That's my brother's name. Uh -huh. I love the name because it's universal. Book the Cloud Nine Spa Room. You're gonna love it. Yeah. You got the Cloud Nine balcony. But yeah, you're going to love it. You have the upgraded um, amenities in your room. You'll be able to get priority um, scheduling of spa, things like massages, acupuncture, if that's your thing. I did it once. Shut my damn darn site down. <laughs> What's up, Chastity? Again, Chastity has another question. How do you get a refund if internet sucks and you get paid and you pay for premium? Email guestcare at carnival.com. As soon as you get back with your group, I mean, with your booking number, tell them. Usually they just refund it because if it sucked, they know it sucked because there's a trend and there's people been um, complaining about it. So it's not like you just made it up. There is record that it sucked on your sale. And, and most of the time they'll just refund it back. Or you can go to guest services on board if you have time to do that. Right. Me, I'll deal with it when I get home. I don't have time to stand in no line. Right. All right. All they say question. Did you answer this one? Can you control the AC yeah. in your room? I hate sleeping hot. Yeah, you can. Yeah. yeah. I've That's never a had a problem. Like, there's some people that have to sleep with fans and stuff. I'm not that person. Um, uh, but you can't, y'all. Um, he did also ask, can you how can you reserve a lounge chair at the main pool? You, you can't. can't. They just got to show up and just, just hope that up. one is available. Yeah. Yeah. Or that the people that got up at two o'clock in the morning and put their towels down, which they need to do something about that. All right. I see. Uh, Rosalind asking about the internet package on the Liberty because we haven't been on that. I haven't so been I'm on not Liberty. sure. Yeah. <clears throat> it wasn't good on the Magic last, last month. month. Evil. Yeah. Last time we was on Magic, it was, it, it was, it, man. It, yeah. It made me want to cuss, I... fuss. Yeah. I was stressed out because I yeah. work on, you know, even though I do this, like I work <laughs> during the day on cruise ships. You're like, well, I work in pockets. Right. Um, And I had to get up like three o'clock in the morning where a lot of people wasn't on the Internet and boggling it down to actually get anything done. All right. For the one that had the <laughs> weed question, <laughs> honest, uh, honest black man said hey. very easy i mean his name is honest black man yeah very easy uh let me see we were sniffed by a drug dog and i smell it and, and i smelt it on board okay oh yeah yeah me too let's see yeah we i ain't gonna say this but we, we was in close proximity to it that's the, <laughs> that's a good question jennifer is it worth a lifetime ban is my it's question not. and it's not and, and 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 for me uh I probably can get over the ban, but if I'm on the cruise ship with my family, right, and it's a bunch of us, we having a good time, and I brought weed, and I got busted and get kicked off the ship. That's not a now good look. they have to decide if they want to leave with us or yeah. with me because I did it. Right. And then if you in international waters, there's a whole cluster buff there because you got to go, you got to get off, go to the embassy, all that. So it's a lot. You get caught, and you got to spend all this money. To get back home because you got kicked off. So no, I don't That's think not it worth it. I don't think it worth it. Look, say get look, just go ahead and chill out, get you a couple shots. Then when you get home, smoke your weed. Daryl Daryl said, Carl, we're gonna let the dogs out on you. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, right, Jennifer. I'd rather have the option to travel. Yes. Yeah. I say, yeah, I hope you're not being, I hope you're not being, I guess, bringing marijuana on my cruise and near my room. Because they said they, they, they said they going to snitch on you, man. Ooh. 
People like me will report you. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I told somebody, because I even smelled it on Virgin. I told somebody, I said, if you ain't sharing, we gonna tell it. They say, I know I ain't smell it no more. I was like, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Question is, uh, is the Alchemy Cocktail flight only available on embarkation day? Thank you, guys. You are the best. Yeah, it is, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And I have never done it because there's just so much going on on embarkation yeah, day. It is. I think they should extend it at least to a C day. I think they should do it then. Unless it's changed. I'll, I'll let you know after next month because we're, we, we're selling next month. Um. Yeah, pull up Rosalyn. Rosalyn asks, I'm a diabetic. Uh, will I have to pay for a sh a sharp sharps or, needle? Sharps needle, okay. Um, the container. They don't charge for the container, but they have started charging if you need to have that medical cooler for your insulin. They have started charging that for the week. So if you're not working with a travel agent, call Carnival and get an ad and tell them about it, and they'll get in touch with the ADA department and they'll do a workaround with all of that and give you with the pricing and that how does that work but for the the needles itself no all right next question coming from John Morrison first time cruiser booked on the Vista a Havana interior what's your favorite part of the ship I haven't been on the Vista yeah um and every time I I haven't been on the horizon either. Y'all heard that question. Every time we book, it get canceled. <laughs> uh, but in general, on all the ships, I can say that my favorite place to be is on the Lido. That's my favorite part of the ship. Um, I, I, I think, think you're right. Because I feel like that's the spot where you get to meet a lot of people. You get to yeah. hang out. And you know, that's the, there's a pools there. That's most of the time where uh, Guy's Burger is, Blue Iguana. Um, sometimes the seafood shack is close by, but most times it's a little ways down. So uh, yeah, to me, the Lido deck is the best part. I agree. Me. I don't know if they were asking about rooms though. Oh, I thought I was they thinking were the, about rooms. Yeah, I was thinking about the best when they say your um, favorite part of the ship. Yeah. So I hope that answered it. Yeah. But if you're talking about room, my favorite part of the ship is still the Lido deck. So if I'm booking a cabin, my cabin is usually going to be on the Lido deck in the mid section of that Lido deck. But if you're doing like the Carnival Mardi Gras and the celebrations and the Jubilees, the Lido deck is all, it's an awesome place to be, but you're going to walk. Yeah. So I would go lower down on decks 11, 12, or even a cove balcony because it mm. puts you close and in, in mid towards the back a little bit. Because it puts you right up and down the elevator to where all the action is. Right. When you're on that Lido deck and you're a little bit forward, that ship is humongous. We walked. Honey. Yeah, we walked. We walked. <laughs> I think I lost a couple pounds. Yeah. And I ate a whole lot of food. Yeah. Yes, yeah, there's someone dry snitching. Yep. I see bruh said, uh, I ain't bringing none, but if you got it, pass it. <laughs> if I trust you. <laughs> Like you people be scared me these days. I'm like, what you got in that? All right, we're gonna do a few more questions and then we're gonna be out y'all way so y'all can get some sleep so you can mm -hmm. work tomorrow mm -hmm. so you can enjoy your weekend. And me, I gotta enjoy myself and get some sleep Hello. so we can celebrate the queen's 45th birthday. Mom, mm -hmm. what you got? Mm -hmm. Say, baby, what we doing? Uh, Night <laughs> like this. I wish. All right, Lanice said, if you need an accessible room and and it's not available, can you get a discount? No. Uh, it didn't. I didn't know I would need an accessible uh, room this year. No. Oh man, sorry to hear that. Unfortunately, no. I mean, because there's no, there's no like replacement for an accessible cabin, and accessible cabins cost the same amount that any other cabin would be anyways in their category so an interior accessible is the same price as an asset as a interior balcony you know same so no said said a weed question keeps on coming up and i'm gonna keep <laughs> i told y'all i know my audience <laughs> say what does carnival do if they find weed in your bag where they um um while trying to embark uh, is that considered attempting smuggling it to is. them? Yes. It is. And yeah, you can get put sign. off immediately. You can get arrested because you're right in port where they have right. the cops right there. Um, 
And young alone, we ain't talked about that they and can the charge the $500 fine. fine. And they need to check and see if that's if they even if that's oh, higher yeah. now since this new campaign. It's still five hundred. They sent they, they sent me an email yesterday to reinforce it. Yep. Let's see. So when so is the best time, time to book a cruise? Anytime. Yeah. But most people, for me, I've been busy as hell this month. So a lot of people will start to plan right after Christmas. And then it tapers off a little bit because everybody is starting to be in the flow of traveling. Right. And then like now the kids about to go back to school. My travel planning is like in full gear right now. So Dawn said, is there a place, uh, is, is there a price for the Serenity area? No. no. Yeah. Yeah. Serenity is uh, free. Just The only part about the Serenity is getting a spot because it'd be packed over there because all them adults be running from the geek. That part. <laughs> Dawn asks, uh, when, do, uh, when did they open the Faster to the Fun? I think that was. I don't remember when they opened yeah. it, but it's like purchasing an excursion. So. Once you um see it, you better snag it because they don't usually last long. A lot of people love it. I've never did it. I don't actually see a need for it. Not for my needs. Some people do. Right. So Bronx Chick said Horizon is absolutely gorgeous. I know. Yeah, I can't wait till we can get on there, man. And it is not canceled. <laughs> I'm scared to do it because I'm like, am I jinxing myself? But if I book it again, will it be another like shutdown? <laughs> Andre say, I'm definitely on the Lido deck thanks to my awesome travel agent, Lynette and Stanley. I mean, I ain't going to do nothing to you that I ain't going to do to myself. So it says, Andre plugged it for those of you who did not know that the queen is a travel agent and we are taking bookings at this time. If you're a first time cruiser and you start in this process and you stress, overwhelmed, don't know what to do, don't know where to turn, turn this way. Because you're over here anyway. Yeah, and she will help you have a stress-free, amazing cruise. She'll help you through the whole process. Uh, our website information is linked below. You click Book a Clown with Cruise. Hey. It will take you over to the site. Also, on that same note, we do have Facebook groups. We so do. if you have not joined our Accountable Facebook group, that's linked below. If you have not joined our Virgin Voyages um, Facebook group, that's booked below. Also, while we advertise... <laughs> <laughs> If you did not know, uh, we're doing the Grown and Sexy again in 2024. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, we have an, an excellent response. People are booking like left and right. And center. Yes. So the dates of that is July the 28th through August the 2nd. We are going to Cozumel, Mexico and Bimini, Bimini Bahamas. Bahamas. So if you're looking to join a group of, I'm going to say it, Fabulous, grown and sexy. Yeah, both men and women, couples, couples. solos, and you want to be you like them good vibes on vacation and good people to talk to and connect with, and that's it. Hey, join us there. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to go on a long rant, but I just let you know if that's what you're looking for, join us next year. Mm -hmm. Grown and sexy 2025. All right, and on that note, let's go on. Said, was it go ahead, go up. Oh, what do you say? Um, uh, Mel Mel. Was it complicated picking dining spots on Virgin? No, as long as people see, here's the thing about Virgin. The culture of Virgin is just totally different than any other cruise line. And it's because they don't do buffets. They don't do any of those. You just walk up and get food when you want to. They do have what they call a galley. And that's like quick eats or kind of like being in a food court. You still have to sit down, put your flag up. They bring the food to you. It's, it's, it's quick. But all of their eateries are restaurants. So yeah. you have to schedule your time to the restaurant. What happens is people don't know about this culture and they may have not used a travel agent or when they book, they just booked and didn't read anything else on the website. And they don't know that, oh, I should have did this before I got on board or did it on my app and just schedule your dining. Right. What I tell people, do you know what you're going to be eating or uh, where, what time you want to eat beforehand? Probably not, but schedule something. Right. Because it's easier to move things around than to just do it all new when you get on board. Right. So just book your stuff up. So much easier to move it around if you like, you're somewhere be like, oh, I don't want to eat right now. Well, let me see what's available later on. And you could just move your spot. 
But if there's nothing available, it's hard. All right. I, I think we might have reached the end of the road. Uh, but with that said, before mm -hmm. we go, you're never going to be hungry on Virgin because they do have standby lines. Yeah. So if you don't aren't able to actually do it, just go to the standby line and be like, do you think I can get in? Most of the time is yes, except for like gum bag or the test kitchen, because those are places where it takes a long time to eat or you have to be like family style or social style. Right. Sometimes it's harder to just walk into a standby line for those. All right. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh AM is asked, where is the pardon for the growing and sexy uh, Miami. Miami? We are leaving from Miami. So, all right, y'all, we're going to put a plug right here. We hope y'all enjoy your weekend, and we will see you guys again on next week. Straight from the VA. Dirty, dirty south. Chew up. Chew down. Chew down.